I've recently been invited to a TV show to speak about personal finance. This really got me thinking about how tough the current economic times are. You know, fuel prices are high, food prices also keeps on going up. It is very clear for me that we all need multiple streams of income to survive. So I wanted to let you guys in on how I've been surviving. I recently started learning how to trade through the OctaFX trading platform. So OctaFX, which is now called Okta, is a reliable global trading platform which has been operating since 2011. It is a licensed and regulated broker in SA and has been recognized as best broker in SA 2023. They offer a diverse range of instruments such as stocks, crypto assets, as well as indices. What I like about them is that they cater for beginners like me. Okta provides lots of free educational material for traders who want to learn. They have forex tutorial, webinars, as well as trading ideas. They also offer you a demo account where you can sharpen your trading skills until you find your own trading strategy. So if you're interested in joining Okta, make sure that you download the app. Link to download the app is on my bio. Also use my promo code, which is Zwanda, so that you can get your 100% deposit. And you get the money, you, you, you like you wanna you wanna you wanna catch up. Every single sweet you didn't get, every oh, single yes. the trauma kind of thing. I'm telling you, we want to catch up into the lifestyle which we feel like we missed out on. And a lot of us African people we have consumerism mentality. Mm. We, we like you want to eat it, it must be eaten. Yeah. Uh, I know one day when I was talking to this other guy about saving, he said, What if you die? I'm like, what if you leave? What mm. if you freaking them leave? Who you gonna depend on? It comes from the fact that we didn't have enough when we were growing up. Now we wanna catch on on the mm. things in which we missed out. That's what make make makes it hard. But also discipline for anything literally is hard. And savings, the biggest component or su success factor of saving, is actually discipline. So if we can deal with the discipline, then saving should be easy. Yo, 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 Rafet, welcome to yet another episode of No Chill Vodcast, Rafet. When you hear No Chill Vodcast, you always, don't forget, remember three E's. We are here to entertain you guys, to educate, and to encourage you. In today's episode, Rafet, to, wow, I feel so honored, Rafet, to, to just sit with this person. Because her name is Zwanda Nana Rasuela. She's here. Yes to teach us about everything finance. She, she's a personal uh, finance guru or mogul. <laughs> she knows everything about mind affairs too. She's also a graduate from VETS. Uh, she graduated in mining engineering. So we're gonna hear about that refer to. So, but I want you guys to understand, if you have any money issues in terms of investing, saving, or anything that, you know, you think you have a challenge with money, trust me. Today, I'll try my best to ask the questions that will solve that uh, problem uh, through her, her story. Zwanda. Ah. What do you mean, Fez? And she's Zwanda. I'm so excited. You know, <laughs> we will also mix some Vendanyana in there, I feel, too, you know, for you to learn also. If, you know, <laughs> you, you must learn from us. So, Zwanda, I, I love your story. Um, you... Just take me through your upbringing. How did Zwanda grow? Um, you know, because I want to understand the convictions that you actually have maintained from your childhood up until today. I just yeah. want to understand, but also connect it with the money. Yeah, yeah. So I normally get that question a lot because yeah. people want to know if really I adopted this later or if I got it when I was a child. And to be honest, I did get it when I was a child. Yes. So I am from a village called Ngokuru Chirata. Yeah. It's found in Vuani. I was raised by my parents, my dad and my mom, mm -hmm. who my dad is a teacher. My mom works in the Department of Agriculture. So wow. when I was growing up, my dad was very, very intentional about what he educated us. 
Yeah. Um, he was, uh, at that time, I didn't understand it, but now I really appreciate some of the principles that I learned from him. Yeah. For an example, when I was in grade one, I used to get like a weekly pocket money, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, I would go to school, being <laughs> the rich kid who has all the money, yeah. and it was five red, by the way. It was <laughs> <laughs> so you were rich by then. Yes. <laughs> that was a lot. Yeah, so yeah. I would go with it to school, and I would you know, show off to my friends yeah. and I would spend all of it. When I get home, being a child that I was, I went to my dad and said, I want money for tomorrow. He was yeah. like, no, I said this was weekly, so you're not going to get replenishment of that pocket money. So I would figure out, like, within the house, what can I get? What left leftovers can I get mm. so that I can eat yeah. um, in school? So it went on even when I was in high school. It also uh, happened that when I, was, I got to university, I got given... Um, an annual pocket money because of it, right? Because yeah. he had trained me. Mm. So from a very young age, I actually learned the repercussions of spending money that is meant for tomorrow. Today, yes. I was yes. like, you know what? If you eat money that is meant for tomorrow, you're definitely going to work harder than you're supposed to. Yes. So that's that's just how I grew up. But another thing that I actually liked, <laughs> now yeah. that I'm older, when yeah. I was young, I used to call my dad stingy. Yeah. I remember a friend of mine asked me, like, who do you like between your mom and dad? And yeah. I remember so vividly that I was like, my mom, of course, yeah. my dad is stingy, yeah. you know? Um, so my dad used to say that for anything that you want, mm. you need to write it down and maybe a couple of words on why you want it and mm. leave the paper on the table. I used to leave home uh, at 4 a.m. Yeah. going to school. So that means that when he wakes up later, he will find the paper, review it, and approve or decline, right? Yeah. Um, and you didn't get any opportunity to actually come back and justify you were declined you were declined so at some point i remember i wanted a school bag mm. and i wrote i want a school bag it's going to help me to carry books to school yeah. and so forth and so forth right I, it was a solid business case so i went to school when i came back i found that my dad had a jean school bag on the table right yeah. what i wanted was a nice young school bag with barbie floral yes, stuff happening yes, yeah. um and at that time i was so hurt that i cried to my mom and i was like no like i said i wanted a school it's like this is a school bag you got a school bag and it's not only a school bag it's a sustainable school bag yes. so even now <laughs> trust me for everything that i buy i actually mm. question whether this is worth it or not because oh. i was taught that money that just just it doesn't just come yes. you have to figure out why you need it and someone has to you know at that time being my dad had to approve whether that is something that you need at that time or not so yeah. i think in summary really i really learned a lot at that time it was torture i felt like i was yes, abused yes, but now course. to be honest i i get so surprised actually it started in university mm. i got so surprised when a friend of mine got excluded and when her parents came to fetch her, they came with the Range Rover. I was like, ah, I'm a priority. <laughs> like, this person is financially excluded. Oh, and, damn. I mean, they, they can just sell the car. If education is that important to, to their them. child. Yeah. They, but it's, it's happening a lot where we get our priorities mixed up. Mm. Um, and we end up spending our money in ways that are not aligned with what we want for our lives. Wow, I mean, that's a beautiful, nice story. Looking just by just what you said there. So now there's sustainability that you were taught. Yes. Saving for tomorrow. Yes. Those are the things that I got from the gene bag. It means that <laughs> this, you have to sustain yes. it for long, as long as you, you want it. So in terms of, obviously, money, right? Mm -hmm. Money, you need to spend it, and at the Definitely. same time, you need to, to, to sustain it. Mm -hmm. Tell me, those two stories, what did they teach you about money? Those two stories. In, in, in general, yeah. like I, th I feel that money is a tool that should enable you to better your life, right? Yeah. It's, uh, we should not look at money as something that can get us what we want at that time. Yeah. I think as a child, you want so many things. Yes. You want so many things and you run to your, to your parents to, to ask for those things, mm. right? Um, then for me, I learned that it's a tool that should be used to get to, for the betterment of your livelihood. Yes. It, you should not just be buying things. Mm. You should ask yourself, like, how will this better my life? Mm. My dad may have said no to a, a, a new crop top that I wanted at that time, but he said yes to education because education was going to sustain me, right? Mm. Another thing is that um, in terms of um, 
are spending it as well, yeah. you really need to ask yourself, like, does this align with where I want to be tomorrow, right? Mm. And and also, say no to yourself. Say no to yourself sometimes if it's not aligned. Yeah. Say no. That's the hardest <laughs> one. <laughs> Buffett, just to remind you, this episode is sponsored by Okta. Okta, they are a reliable platform where you can trade if you want to trade. And if you want to join, there's a link uh, in my description. Join it and use my code there on the screen. It will show. So we're learning about money. And I, I want to understand your, your then mindset and your now mindset yeah. with regards to money. I think w when I was growing up, yeah. I used to think that I didn't really know how money came about. Yeah. I saw my parents, they have a house, they have a car. I was like, money is abundant. It's yeah, there yeah. somewhere. <laughs> you know, they must have it. Now that I'm grown, I realize that I actually cannot afford the lifestyle that my parents offered to me when I was growing up. Mm. Uh, they did so much to be able to afford me so much now mm. that when I think about it, it's things that sometimes I'm constantly saying no to myself for those things yeah, because yeah. I can't afford them. Yes. That money is a tool which you, it's, it's something which you need to work hard for. It's not sitting somewhere waiting for you to take when you wish, right? Yeah. It needs to be um, it needs to be spent wisely. It needs to be saved so that you can use it for the things in which you want and you will have to prioritize the things which you want, right? Unlike back then where I thought, you know, it can come whenever, yes. whichever way, you know. Um, now I know that I really need to be careful on what I do with this thing that I have. You you get 1000 today. Yes. It clocks in your bank account. Mm-hmm. What is the first thing that you do with the money that comes, the income? You mean 1,000 in particular or I'm any just income? I'm a number, <laughs> random number there. So for me, I, and I love this question, yeah. for me, I think when an income starts, it c comes in into my account, mm. what I normally do is that it has a place where it's going to go because... I actually believes in, believe in budgeting. I think a lot of people think that budgeting is like an administrative work. People yeah. budget because they don't have enough yeah. and so forth. For me, I look into budgeting as a spending plan, a plan that will guide me on how I want to spend my money. And I do this before money comes in mm. so that when it does come in, I can refer to when I was at my sober yeah. mind before it arrived, yes. what did I decide that this money mm. is supposed to do? Because there is some sort of excitement that comes yes. in when you start seeing it on your account that you start spending it even on the things which when you were sober you didn't think that they were priority yes. so i have the spending plan where i actually look into and and, and execute right mm. one of the things in which i do is to automate things so that i don't get to decide on a daily basis or on a monthly basis what my money should be able to be doing mm. so in january i sit decide this is what i want to achieve and i make sure that those things the places in which i save or invest in gets debited so yeah. that means i don't have to put transfer i'm not the one who transfer it yes. gets debited together with my other credit that i have right yes, yes. so that removes my manual intervention into figuring out what i want to do with my money and make sure that it's systematic yes. so that's what i normally do and of course i allocate entertainment one of the reason why people actually um, do not get to achieve the things in which they want to achieve when it comes to uh, personal finance or setting up financial goals is because they understate how much they spend when it, it comes to um, their entertainment, yes. right? So you understate that and you think, okay, I can save 5,000 rand. Yeah. But then you don't know, Uguti, when are you actually spend 5,000 rand per month on <laughs> alcohol? Yeah. So when I do my mentorship session, one thing that I start with is to review three months banking statement. Yeah. I said, okay, let's review three months banking statement. Because one thing that your banking statement will tell you yeah. is who you are, what your money personality is, right? Yeah. And you don't have to justify it because the lenders, when they're looking into borrowing you money, they will yeah. ask for that three months banking statement and they won't even give you a call. Whatever they find in that three months banking statement, if you're swiping alcohol uh, every weekend, if you're doing, that's what they will conclude. And they will give you your rates in terms of approval based oh. on that three months wow. banking statement. That's so that's what I start with to say, let's understand who you are mm -hmm. and what you're actually spending your money in because mm -hmm. most of the time planned versus actual is different right yes, so yes. now let's see the actual and then let's actually create a spending plan based on who you are right mm -hmm. if you have you drink alcohol let's put a budget aside yeah. for that to say you're going to be able to have this pocket money that will uh, help you to be able to have entertainment in your life so that's what i actually look at it wow i mean uh, you, that that was very profound of 
uh, you know the statement the bank statement <laughs> yes. that's what they check they check what you guys are buying definitely wow. definitely so tell me uh, what what does gratitude gratitude oh, i know yes. there's not money you know yeah, but yeah. gratitude plays a role it when does. it comes to your finance oh it does, does it so do? much it does i'm I'm a, i'm a christian i'm a believer so really yeah. i believe in in gratitude yeah. and i don't believe in giving as a reward to god i feel like god gave so yes. i'm honoring him because he gave it's yes. like an acknowledgement of yes. of of what i have i really feel like in everything that we do that we manage to achieve there's an element of blessing in the and yes. for me that is also part of it plays a huge part of my finances yes. right yes. so i collaborate with initiatives especially that those at church yes. which actually uh, contributes towards you know giving back yeah. for me that's that's a lot i think we are very privileged to be honest to be able also to be sitting in a setup like this also to speak about money the way we do yes. you know because it's not everyone who actually gets this privilege yes, right yes. so being able to enable someone to be a step further than where they are it actually really means a lot to me and i feel like if collectively we can do what we can in areas where we can regardless of how small or how big a lot can be achieved and yeah. we can move further together yeah yes wow i love i love the way you articulated that question let's look at your uh, educational background yeah. you, you are an engineer and here today you're sitting with me talking <laughs> about finance <laughs> yes. how did your degree impacted or maybe contributed to your passion yes so i am uh, a math child oh, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah, numbers played sense. a huge role into yeah. maybe all of this right when i was growing up my dad realized that okay it seems like there's a lot of light when it comes to numbers here yeah. let's nature it so i used to have like um uh weekend additional um, uh, tutoring yeah. at home. Yes. So I'm a village girl, so trust me, this was huge. Yes. <laughs> because we don't have tutors that side. <laughs> yeah. So my dad went to find his friend, because he's a teacher, went mm -hmm. to find his friend who was a maths teacher, and he used to come every Saturday. Guys, like, I hated this. Mm. I hated this with all the fiber of my being. Because it's Saturday and I'm a child. I want to play, yeah. right? So I had classes on Saturday for math and science. And uh, voluntarily, I asked for geography, right? Wow. So with that, my dad kind of noticed that I loved mathematics. So I got natured a lot um, in that regard. And I that made me be interested in the course. So when I got to grade 12, I was very good at it. Yeah. And that made me choose engineering. When I got to engineering, I decided that, okay, it's fine. I love engineering and I love maths, but I need to find who I am yes. and my passion, right? Yes. And the one thing that was closer to what I knew uh, was the numbers, which is then money. Yeah. But besides just money being numbers, I kind of realized that every decision you make is a financial decision. If you want to decide where you want to stay, it's a financial decision. If you want to decide where your kids should mm. go to school, it's a financial decision. If you want to also follow your passion, Yes. And stop working nine to five. It's a financial decision. If you want to do, um, you know, like gratitude, you mentioned like yeah. philanthropic work. You, yeah. you, it's it's a financial decision. So then I realized that if I want to be able to play part in being the responsible person yeah. and deciding how my life should be, I need to get my finances in order. Mm. So I did that because I had annual pocket money. I did that for myself first. Right, mm. um, and where you, your question says, how do how do I find that engineering plays a role? Mm. With engineering, I self-taught. I, I didn't do much of going to class. Is it? So yeah, there was classes, but I wow. didn't understand the lectures because <laughs> they were speaking. Maybe they were from maybe Russia or yeah. China, and they had a different accent from this Venda girl mm. or what she could relate. You know, so I self-taught myself. Yes. What that influence? How that influenced my passion for personal finance is that I'm not afraid of re re reading terms and conditions at this point, mm. right? Because I learned to self-taught. Like everything that I know, I actually went and explored it exploded myself yeah. right so that i think it's how the two get to connect my love for meds and also being able to self teach myself yeah. a lot of things yeah how, how do you see the the formal education especially in 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 these times uh, do you see any bigger role especially when it comes to finance, edu financial education? I do, but I think our household has a lot more role to play 
in personal finance than financial institution. Let's not forget financial institution is a business mm -hmm. in as much as its purpose is to educate. Mm. They educate focusing on the things that they feel like sells because they, they need to m yeah. make a profit, right? Yeah. What I feel we need to do is to incorporate our, our finances into our day-to-day -day, as families, as households, as communities. Mm. Before we can go into financial institution and incorporate it there, yeah. I feel that it needs to start with our household, right? Yes. If we can, just like morals, um, just like, you know, respect, I feel like personal finance should be embedded in there on teaching kids because mm. it influences a lot, a lot on how we become and the things we do yes. and what we take as priority, it influences a lot. And hence, I feel like it could be changed more or more efficiently if it was taught from home than it would be in, in finance. And yeah. the reason I say this is there are so many people who studied accounting and, and uh, finance, financial management yeah. courses who are struggling with their own finances. Yes. Because it's not necessarily the education, I believe. It has a lot to do with behavior. Mm. It has a lot to do with your background as well and yes. some of limiting beliefs that you learned when you're growing up. So we need to handle it maybe from home and from household, from communities before we can go to financial wow. institutions. I mean, yeah. how do you... Okay, someone is listening, is watching. <laughs> yes. They want to do that. Yeah. What is the first step? I think one thing that I normally ask when I'm, if I'm, I'm called to speak, I mm. ask people, uh, what is it that they wish their parents would have done for them, right? And and it's normally people maybe like young as us. Yeah. And people have a list. People have a list. Yo, if, if my parents could have gotten me a house when I was graduating, yo, mm. that would have set me up. And it's real answers. Yeah. What I normally say is that, that is you admitting to having a responsibility to doing it to your child. Mm. Our parents may, might have failed in giving us the things that are setting uh, us up for mm. financial success right now, yeah. but it's our responsibility because we are seeing that it's a gap. Yes. It's a gap that needs to be filled. And you identifying that it's a gap, it means you need to work towards filling that. Yes. So anyone who sees that this such things as black tax, there's such things as, you know, uh, my parents buying me a house that they didn't get me. Yeah. That means you're acknowledging the responsibility mm. uh, to be able to do it for your own children yeah. so that that can be like passed, passed down, right? However, also we need to start incorporating our children in terms of decision making. I know for me it felt like pain because also it was not communicated. Mm. I, I lived it. I experienced it without knowing what it is. Yeah. But kids these days, somehow they're very smart. I mean, my three-year-old niece said probably one day I was like oh I think I learned this word when I was in grade eight <laughs> so they're very smart they can comprehend <laughs> yes. those things so please incorporate your children in some of the decision making for an example when you're going to buy groceries mm. a lot of parents would take with their children but those children don't know how much you have on the pocket let them write a, have a paper and a pen right mm. and tell them we have 1500 to buy groceries as you take a product and put it on the cart let them write the number let them calculate how much is left so that they can trade they can see that we have to return sugar so that we can get milk mm. then they will know that you don't just go to grocery shop and take things and put them in the mm. cart there is money and there's limits to what you can take from the shop. So that mentality mm. will help them also when they start implementing some financial principles in their own lives. Wow. Is that what happened to you? Not, not, no. So I, you wrote your own list? <laughs> no. And you, you, For you, me, it was just writing a list and he goes and he buys. Off it comes. And I was like, ooh, this guy has money, but he doesn't want to give it to me, you yeah. know? So, <laughs> but what did you get this knowledge? Um, this one? is something which I see as we as we are growing. My yeah. sister has two two children. I see the way they ask for money from mm. me. Um, I see my friends who have children and the way they nature their children, and yeah. I kind of realized the gap that that we have. And I was like, if this was me. And I was the child. This is what I would be learning from this. Like children these days gets a phone, a tablet, and an Apple a, a laptop. Mm -hmm. Like at, at a very young age. I'm not saying that is wrong. If you have the ability to do so, do so. Yeah. But at some point you have to tell, you have to get to a point where you show children that money is not sitting in a vault somewhere waiting for you to go and take as you wish. We work hard for it. Like, what do you do at work? I think it's also another conversation you need to start to have with your children so that they get to see that you do something and you get paid for it. Mm -hmm. And when you get paid for it, that money is distributed to other things before it can get to be, to to come to their, um, to their hands. Because mm -hmm. it gets difficult when kids become teenagers to understand that you actually do not have money. Yeah. You know? I, 
only when I was grown did I understand that my parents were telling the truth when, I, when they said they don't yeah. have money. But when I was young, I thought I was being abused. So let's yeah. communicate better so that even kids can, can get to understand this. Uh, you know, this, this topic of money is troubling a lot of people. Yes. I mean, families out there... I wanna. You mentioned black tax. I wanna yes. talk about black. I wanna ask questions about black tax. Yes. Because it's something that somehow it can delay us. Definitely. And our plans. Mm-hmm. How do you see? How do you view it? What is so, your thought so about it? So from my, p- I've thought so much about black tax because somehow I did two interviews on TV and they were asking solely about black tax. Yeah. And I see it as a common topic and common issue, right? Yeah. However, I think it's important that we are able to maybe define it properly, right? Yes. So people who have the capacity and willingness to support their pro- their parents, mm-hmm. they say it's family responsibility. And those who do not have the capacity or do not have a will or are overwhelmed mm. in such responsibility, they call it black tax. So there is no need for us to fight one mm. another on the internet saying, yeah, there's black tax. No, there's no black tax. No, it depends on where are you sitting. Yes. If it's overwhelming you, definitely they're taxing you. If you have the capacity and the willingness, why don't you give yes. your money to your parents, right? Mm. So for those who have a problem of being overwhelmed and being asked of things beyond what they are capable of doing, definitely that is a black tax and we need to handle it. Yeah. One of the biggest problem when it comes to black tax is actually that it 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 consi- it's it's consist of two very sensitive um, aspects, like two important things. Yeah. One money, mm-hmm. which we do not have because we are black people. Yeah. Historically we're not supposed to have it and we don't have it. Yeah. Right. And the second one is family. Very two sensitive topics that then gets together when we discuss black tax. So very when we talk about black tax, you you are afraid as well to deal with this issue because you don't want to be cut off from your parents because they don't believe that you, you don't have money. You know, mm. the same way I didn't believe my parents don't have money. Yeah. Same thing. You're like, okay, maybe I should just give them. And then at some point you do it at your own detriment. Yeah. You, you are suffering mentally because you're supporting them and you can't communicate because you're afraid of uh, being cut off. Yeah. The reality is if you do not communicate, because the biggest gap here is communication. Yes. We need to communicate it so that we can minimize the expectation that our parents have yeah. of us and also minimize their perception of our capacity. Exactly. Somehow they think yeah. you are an engineer, yes. you know, and you speak about money, you must have yes. somehow beyond yes. what you actually do have. So the way we can handle it is by communicating so mm-hmm. that we can uh, minimize the expectation Tell your parents what you would be capable of doing. If it's per month, tell them this is how much I'll be able to be capable of doing per month. If it's something outside of what I'm sending you on a monthly basis, I would only put it on the next month's budget. After reviewing and seeing if there is capacity. Otherwise, I'll send it in the next two months. If you start training Mm -hmm. your your parents in this regard, at least they will know that you have sent them that 1,000. So even if they need a sink change because, uh, you know, somehow they want to change a gate, they want new tiles. <laughs> even if when that comes, they yeah. know that you've already done what you could for the month and they can only tell you and you can only tell them when this project you will be able to yeah. do it. That allows you a chance to plan. And when you're planning, you can actually face it to an extent where it will fit into your budget. If it's 12 months out, then it will be t- 12 months out. Another thing that I see when it comes to Black Tax is that we need to support our families on sustainable things. I think sending a thousand rand home sounds good because mm. really maybe they're buying groceries. But sometimes they're only going to KFC and, you know, yeah. living this lavish life so yeah. that they can show them that now my child is an engineer. Um, so when, what do I mean when I say sustainable um, uh, things? You need to look into if I'm giving my parents 1000 per month, mm. what would they do with it? Probably groceries and consumables. But if you save it yourself and give them a 5000 rand, maybe they can change that sink, right? Mm. Or they can change that um, towel or they can do so that, you know, at least you can get to see what the money is getting to do. Because sometimes it's because we are supporting consumables and Mm. we really need to stop supporting consumables unless if really your parents have no other way of eating then we need to stop supporting consumables and only commit to doing things which we can see that this is what is changing after certain projects also you need to say that i'm only going to do this and this and this when it's done i'm done Mm. right because there's only so much renovation that you can do in your house so let's communicate 
to minimize um, expectations that come from home yeah. and change perspective. But secondly, let's support on, on sustainable things such as maybe helping your brother to go to do a license because you know with the license they will get yes. um, a job. Yes. Yep. Because I, I, this, this is my experience. I kind of feel like I suffered with that black tech thing in the beginning when I was working. You know, I wanted to even build a house, you know. Yes. That time I'm walking to work, you know, like I'm yes. sacrificing. Why is there that entitlement feeling? You mean from the parents? From from uh, from you. From me. The guilt. Okay, the I guilt, see. Yeah. I see. It's because at the end of the day, we do recognize the need. The fact that it's a black test doesn't mean that this is not a real need. Yeah. And that's the conflict that I see. Parents feel like this is a real need. I don't have a house. She's working. Why can't she build me a house? There is a need, but it doesn't mean I'm capable of 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 of, of giving you what you need. There is a need, but it doesn't mean I have the capacity. Right? Mm. So even you as a person who's supposed to be giving, you see the need, and I think that's where the, the guilt comes from. It comes from needs that they, we are black people, we come from a historical disadvantaged background. Yeah. Money is not there anyway. So therefore, there's going to be needs. You probably went to school first at home, and there's other siblings who maybe your parents are struggling to send them to school. You, you see the need is there of you having to send them to school, but it doesn't mean you have the ability um, to be able to to send yeah. them all to school. So it's a it's a very <laughs> it's a complex one. I feel that that is the reason why we have guilt. Uh, you know I was doing a research about you. I came across the video where you were sitting with Pacey. Ah yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that guy is a saver. Now when I talk about saving. Yes. You know. Yes. Uh, Cuz there are people who are actually any more than 50,000. Oh, I love that. But Go they, ahead. Yes. But they can't even save a penny. Yes. What, what, what is so difficult about saving? So what I feel is that, again, we come from historically disadvantaged background. Yeah. Most of us, um, what happens is when you get the money, you, you, you like you want to you wanna, you wanna catch up. Every single sweet you didn't get, every oh, single yes. it's a trauma it, kind of thing. I'm telling you, we want to catch up into the lifestyle which we feel like we missed out on. And hence people have a lot of us African people we have consumerism mentality. Mm. We, we like you want to eat it. It must be eaten. Yeah. Uh, I know one day when I was talking to this other guy about saving, he said, What if you die? I'm like, what if you leave? What mm. if you freaking them leave? Who are you gonna depend on? Right? <laughs> so Really, we have a um, consumerism mentality, and it comes from the fact that we didn't have enough when we were growing up. Now we want to catch on on the mm. things in which we missed out. That's what make, make, makes it hard. But also, discipline for anything, literally, is hard. And savings, the biggest component or su success factor of saving is actually discipline. So if we can deal with the discipline, then saving should be easier. But for anything, whether you want to exercise yes. or uh, read or, you know, finish school, it requires some sense of discipline. And that's something that needs to be natured. Wow. I mean, now, as you're saying that, now we, I'm going to have to focus on discipline. How do you <laughs> cultivate discipline? Because I love that. we want to get people to start yes. doing it. Yes. So discipline on its own, and I think it's a, it's a good place to start, right? Mm. You really need to understand, because when you cultivate discipline, you need consistency. Yes. That's where discipline comes from. Yes. You do something so often that, you know, the muscle becomes easier into doing that thing. So yeah. you need to channel consistency. Yes. One thing for sure, you will never attain discipline without practicing. So you need to practice whatever it is that you feel like you need discipline on oh. so that then you can be consistent in it and it will be easier to sustain, right? Um, so when it comes to saving, yeah. start small yes. because it won't feel too big. Yes. There is a level of excitement that yeah. we all know yeah. of seeing a certain balance in your account, right? Yes. So I always challenge people to say, hey, start with, let's say, for example, 500 rand, right? Start yeah. with 500 rand per month, right? At the end of the month, at the end of the year, you have 6,000 rand. Mm -hmm. That 6,000 rand, at the time in which you have it, trust me, it looks small, Yes. right? Because you have it now and you are able to do it. Move into 1,000 rand. And so forth and so forth. And that's how you actually start seeing the value of having to do it mm. and also seeing the value of, you know, doing small things and growing it into a bigger thing. So yeah. start small so that it's not too, 
difficult to do yeah and then stay consistent consistency is the is the one just stay consistently doing it even if it's 500 rand and then come december trust me you will have new goals on what you want to do better yeah yes this there's always a trick and mm -hmm. this is from my personal experience you know um now i've mastered it i'm still learning trust yes. me however there's that time when you are saving that 500 mm -hmm. or you, you're saving that 100 rand mm -hmm. but Tomorrow something happens. I uh, yes. How how do I save the emergency mm -hmm. savings and the saving for the practice? Because here I'm trying to practice to save. At the same time, I know while I'm trying to practice to <laughs> <Yes>. save, <laughs> emergency is coming. Yes, you understand. So how how can you go around it? Uh, yes, just so that you can see the results of your saving and the definitely, consistency. Definitely, definitely. So one of the things that actually makes people to feel discouraged to save mm. is actually emergencies, right? So the concept of insurance yeah. is based on emergencies. It's based on things happening that requires your money, right? Mm. So emergency fund comes in the saving for emergency comes from that what i call um emergency fund is it is a do it myself insurance yeah. you are insuring yourself for things that might happen that may need finances right that's what it is yeah. so how do you balance the two how do you save at the same time saving for emergency yeah. i always think that it's important to save for emergencies first you can also do your practice savings mm. through saving for your emergencies. And saving for emergencies is such an important thing because if you start for saving for a goal, let's say, for an example, you want to buy a house and you think that you want to put up a deposit of 50000 yeah. um, a year, right? Mm. Or you want to save for 50000 a year so that you can buy a house in 2025. Mm. If an emergency comes in, it will steal that 50000 yes. And then you will feel discouraged because then the goal which you are consistently saving from yes. for, it doesn't happen, right? Mm. Hence, I say, get your emergency fund first yes. beforehand because when you're saving for a particular goal, it may steal from you. Because one thing for sure, emergencies will definitely happen, right? So mm. touching on emergency a bit. Mm. So when you're looking into emergencies, they are, there is long-term emergency. I feel like there is like short-term emergency as well. Yeah. Short-term emergency is things that can happen like, you know, today, like you, you're driving out and then the tire, you get a puncture yeah. and then you don't have insurance for it. Then there's a certain amount of 10,000 if you drive, drive a BMW that is needed out from you, mm -hmm. right, that you need to do. To, to. So you need to think about what is it that can happen that can take me out of my budget right now. And you need to cater for that, meaning that you need to write up an amount and know that, okay, minimum at least I must have this amount. This yes. is short-term um, emergency, right? Yes. For me, for an example, um, I am from Limpopo. Yeah. Going there and back can cost me plus or minus 3,000 rand yeah. driving, right? And if my parents call me and they say anything, trust me, I'm driving. I'm going there. Yeah. So that means there must be money that I find somewhere. And there is no way I can have money laying around waiting for this kind of emergency happen. So I need to say particularly for that incident, I need to say that, okay, this can happen. And if it ha does happen, it will take me out of my budget. Mm -hmm. Let me put that aside so that when it does happen, I know that it's set for this thing. So mm -hmm. that's how you kind of list to those things that can disrupt you and save for it. That's, those are short term. Mm -hmm. Long term emergency, which I feel like it's actually a lot more important for people who work nine to five, is that you need at least minimum three to six months worth of your living expenses. And you need to focus on those fast and you need to do it while you still can because as you grow, responsibilities start coming yes. in, right? So why do I say this? When, before COVID, I used to think that this is like, I'm like, who, who's going to get three to six months worth of their living expenses just set aside for emergencies? That's a lot, right? Yeah. You could be doing other things. It's true, right? However, when COVID hit, I saw a lot of people getting retrenched from all industries, yeah. right? From all industries, all qualifications, all level of hierarchy in terms of leadership and, and so forth, yeah. right? And that made me realize that when you get retrenched, the issue is not only the fact that you don't have a job, it's the mental state of not having money. Mm -hmm. So if it finds you without money, it will be also hard for you to yes. get the energy to even go and seek for another employment or another opportunity to make money. Yeah. So we need to cater for that so that mentally we have the capacity and ability to be able to go and seek for more opportunities when that type of emergency can happen. I'm not saying COVID will come, but yes. knowing what we no, I mean, anything can, can happen, happen. Yeah. right? So hence, we need to cater for emergencies. So sometimes, if you have the ability 
You can save if you have you feel like you can save one thousand rand. Maybe you should say five hundred is for emergency and five hundred is for other things, mm. so that you can move both needles at the same time. Wow. Yes. What are your principles when it comes to saving? The ones that you've been implementing and they've been working. Obviously, you mentioned yes. automation. I mm -hmm. believe that is one of them. Yes. Because doing manually sometimes can be <laughs> like... and You're like, I'm not doing it this month. <laughs> yes, you understand? <laughs> yes. Uh, one is automation. I would like you to touch on that also. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the importance of that? Mm -hmm. And other principles okay. that you have developed within the years of, of doing this? So I think when it comes to automation, what you're trying to remove is your emotions, right? Yeah. So we spend through our emotions not logic right yeah. it's it's the excitement of having the thing which you want mm. that drives the decision of buying so the reason why you want to automate is that you want to put logic into your spend because if you only rely on your emotions you're gonna have a lot of you know <laughs> unnecessary things yeah. in your disposal because when your emotions say buy this shoe you're gonna buy it right mm. so you sit down decide what it is that you want or how much you want in a year when that is decided and if you get like a regular income on a monthly basis what you need to do is to get it to be debited right yes. so you can call up on your bank and say okay i want this money on the day of my pay to be debited into this account it could be an investment account it could be it could be anything trust mm. me so it could be an investment account it could be like a, another savings account mm. a fixed deposit account or anything that you want to, where you want to put your money yeah. so then it removes your manual intervention in it it removes your emotions out of it so therefore you know that your goal is moving what you have decided when you're sober in january as part of your goal will still move regardless of how you're feeling yeah. during the months because we feel differently each month, yes, right? Yes, Some yes. month I feel like, yo, I could just rather join my friends to Maldives and, and not save. Maybe let me take this money and save it. But if it's already debited, the, the effort that is required for you to go and withdraw it when you know that it's meant for something else, it's much higher than when it's on your day-to-day -day feeling like you're spending and it's normal money. Yes. So you're removing that manual intervention and that's why I always believe that it's much easier to automate um, when you're trying to save. Another principle that I believe in is that personal finance is personal, right? Yeah. Personal finance is personal. The personal part, guys, underlined because it, you need to personalize it. When I was starting to work, I used to save 60% of my income. Is that realistic for everyone else? No, it's not, right? So you really need to personalize it. You need to understand your circumstances so that you can w w uh, go according to your own pace. Yes. You need to, to be able to understand that also so that you don't get... Disrupt, disrupted uh, along the way. Yes. There are things that will come. There are people who are going to preach certain things, but if you know exactly where you are, if you know what you're trying to achieve, that will help you to stick to the plan and also be content with the amount in which you're saving. Because yes. sometimes we claim or we want to save more than what we have the capacity to do, mm. right? What happens is maybe you want to save, you earn 10,000 rand, and you want to save 5,000 rand, which is 50%. It sounds good yes. on paper. But when you actually start living your life, you realize that, well, I paid 4,000 rand, and um, I'm only left with 1,000 for transport. Where am I going to get money for food? Yes. And so forth and so forth. You realize that your money needs to cater for a lot more than what you allocated it. And then you will get demotivated because you will go and do what? Withdraw yes. from the 5,000 which you've already yes. saved. Yes. So make sure that you are realistic yes. in the goals in which you set for yourself. Also, the principles or the principle of paying yourself first, right? Yeah. We work so hard, guys, to mm. not look back and see what your money ha was able to do. So let's 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 pay ourselves first. What does that mean? It means that when you get paid, you also have a percentage which you know that this has to go to my savings, the thing which I like, or you know. So that paying yourself first simply means that when the money comes in, instead of you focusing on paying the debt, also focus on what do I do for me. Right. Mm, yes. What do I do for my goals? Right. Mm. So consider that so that when looking back and say I've worked for this company for 20 years, what have I achieved with my hard and cash? Mm. And then to be able to track it will give you so much satisfaction that not knowing where your money went. Yes. So that is also another um, a principle. But also sacrifice. Sacrifice. It's a trade-in, guys. When I say 60%, it means I was not driving a Mini Cooper. Although I liked yes. it, I was not driving it, right? Yes. So when you hear things like I saved 60%, figure out if you want to achieve this, what do you have to do to sacrifice that? It took me three years to buy my first car, yeah. right? But at the time in which I wanted to buy it, I had to decide whether I wanted to buy it cash or not. 
but I didn't buy cash, you know. Mm. Uh, but it allowed me to start other investment opportunities that I wouldn't have done them if I didn't have that experience. But at the same time, I feel like you, ne you need to understand that it's a trade-off. Mm. Um, you can look a certain lifestyle right now at yeah. this age, but you will pay for it later Ish. because you won't be able to afford the things that are important at your age when you are 40 because you lived it when you were in your 20. So really, it's a, it's a trade. And we need to figure out what is it that we're willing to sacrifice at the moment. Wow. So three principles, automation, sacrifice, personalize your finance. Yes. Wow. Yes. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. So, but now, yes, sharp. I decided I've personalized. I want to automate. Where do I start? What kind of um, services out there from the banks yes. or from the institution which I can use so that I can see even my money growing or just yes. being there, you know, or also restrict me from emotional attacks like, Ish, now I feel like I want coke. Let me just yes. call the bank. Yes. You know, because I, I, I have... I think what what do you call it? Um, a, a, a banker. Yes, it's a bank thing. Uh, they call it something at, at Standard Bank. I just call and say, "Can I please give me one thousand? I have money there." <laughs> yes. So, I, you know, I want to avoid those kind of things, which means I'll need some sort of service that doesn't allow me to do those things. Yes. I'm restricted. Okay. I want to save my money. What what type of accounts should I open to make sure that the money that I'm saving? It's just going to stay there regardless of my emotions. Definitely. Good question. Yeah. So I think what I will start with from that question is education. Yeah. I think invest in education of understanding products. It's one Most of the time when I hear people say I was scammed or I was robbed, yeah. sometimes people were not scammed. Yeah. They signed for a product they didn't understand. Yes, scammers are there. Yes. Uh, people are getting scammed a lot of money <laughs> out there, yes. so we cannot dispute that. But yeah. sometimes it's people not understanding the products in which they've invested in. Yeah. So the, what they have expected versus what they actually got doesn't match, so then they get surprised and call it a scam, right? Mm. So that comes from not understanding, really. So we need to educate ourselves so that we understand what products are out there, right? And how do they work? Are they fit for our goals? Because these things are called financial vehicles for a reason. Yeah. It's a vehicle that's supposed to take you somewhere. So if you want to go to Dubai, you can't drive there, unfortunately. Yeah. So maybe 10 kilometers out going to Dubai while driving, you're now surprised, Ure, why am I not arriving, right? Yeah. It's because you're using the wrong vehicles. So yeah. not all products are meant for achieving the same thing, right? Yes. So you need to understand your goal and then figure out which product links to what I'm anticipating mm. from this goal, right? That's where we can start. But looking into like the various options that are out there, for someone who's starting, I actually feel like the bank is a safe place, right? Yeah. Because what happens with the bank is that your money is guaranteed. You will definitely get your money back, yes. right? And then... Um, you also nature that habit of contributing maybe on a monthly basis yeah. as well. So I feel that, okay, let me tell you a story before I get there. Yeah. When I started, um, so my dad gave me an annual pocket money. Uh, when I got to second year, I got a buzzery, right? Yeah. When I got a buzzery, my dad had already uh, given me the annual pocket money for the second year. So I know my dad, I'm like, this nigga is going to come back and ask me what I did with this money. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to tell him that. I invested. Yeah. So I went to the bank, feeling myself as a second year student. Yeah. Um, and I was like, yo, I have this money. Please give me the best you can give. You know, yeah. they gave me a fixed deposit account. I put it there. Come the second year, I went to the bank and I said, hey, please show me what, mm. what has happened here. And I was so disappointed at that time. It was 6% uh, written. Mm. I was so disappointed. I was so disappointed at the results. I wanted to speak to the manager. But hey, it was me not understanding yeah. what I was supposed to get. Yeah. So what actually happened is that I started exploring, you know, trying to figure out what more can I get with my money, right? Mm. So it's very important to actually look into understanding what the product will give you. So going back into the bank, what happens is the bank will give you low interest return on investment simply yeah. because they're giving you guaranteed of safety. So they are the ones who assume the safety because yeah. I think people feel like banks are robbing us for not giving us the return. But they're carrying your risk. They're carrying your risk because 
you are not the one carrying the risk because your money, you're going to get it back. It's yeah, guaranteed, it's right? Guaranteed. Pro possibly they have insurances as well to make sure that if a bank's collapse, you get paid your money because that's the promise they made. Yeah. So they carry the risk because with your money, then they do other investments. They fund other people. They fund malls. They fund mines. Yeah. They fund other things which they may not get returns off, yeah. right? But they could also get high returns off. Yeah. So because they are the ones who carry the risk, they are also the ones who carry the, the profit, yes, right? Yes. So hence you get the guaranteed and you get little um, little um, return. return as well, mm -hmm. right? So the, uh, the, the concept that I'm introducing here is the con concept of risk when it comes to other products outside of those of the bank. Yeah. Because when you are... In the social media streets, people will say, yeah, don't save, invest, because investing, yeah. you, are, you, you know, <laughs> you're making money, saving, you're losing money. Yes. But we need to understand the risk associated with the investment portion of things if we're looking into products. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the higher the potential return, the higher the potential risk that can come with that um, mm -hmm. uh, product, right? Mm -hmm. So you have the likes of unit trust, you have ETFs, you have shares, you have you know, businesses as well. So, yeah. but they come with certain risks that you need to be aware of and hence the education aspect is important. So in terms of interest, so when, when I'm saving, obviously mm -hmm. saving doesn't make money. Yes. Let's, let's, let's put it there. Mm -hmm. What makes money is an investment. Yes. So when you are saving money, you're just putting it aside. Yes. And if you want it, at ten, can you lose money by saving? You can, actually. You can. If your saving is actually less than the inflation, uh, then your money is losing value. So it's not like you will go to the bank and find that your 100 rand is 90 rand. No, your hundred rand will still be hundred rand, but it could not, it cannot buy the things mm. which it could buy in the previous year. For example, if I can buy this bottle of water today for hundred rand, come next year, it's probably costing hundred and fifteen. So if my money didn't grow as high as inflation, that means that my money is probably hundred and ten or hundred and five, right? So that means the things which I could afford in twenty twenty three, I could not I cannot afford it now in twenty twenty four because mm. the price, the escalation price of this bottle is actually higher than the return that I'm getting. Right. So what I would like to say in that aspect is that they are savings account that can beat inflation, right? Yeah. Because really investing if you have not channeled your risk appetite, mm. will also trouble you. The thing you're running away from, because <laughs> you need to know mm. that you're running away from guarantee here, but you're going into tipping into risk, yes. right? So yes. then education should be very, very important there from choosing what you're getting yourself into and what would it come with. And definitely I emphasize, I, 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 I recommend that people invest, but also people must educate themselves in what they're getting themselves into as well. Um, what how do you educate yourself like i mean i feel like it's a lot and you know people yes people don't really want to spend much time investing <laughs> in knowledge yes Especially even for money and that money is theirs they just want to listen to a banker and you know there's this trust that we have for people who are advising yeah, us. yeah behind the screen and, and at the end of the day they're they're selling they're selling you know we're forgetting that yeah thing so how do you say okay let me do my own learning here where do you start uh okay so learning is on those things is hard because also you don't know what you don't know right yes so <laughs> i advocate for having mentors right yeah. not only for learning personal finance things but for learning anything in any industry in any yeah. aspect in any field yes. right um get a mentor because your mentor will open your eyes in things which you cannot see even if you try because you just don't know don't and know, yeah. looking into african people's backgrounds i mean money is a concept of buying not a, con a, a, a concept of making more out yes. of it right yes. so get a mentor that's number one but also read books Yes. I feel like books are like one of the most amazing place you can find um, information, right? Yeah. One interesting thing about books, which differs from maybe YouTube, I will speak about other platforms as well. Yeah. It's that information that is published on books needs to be proofread, needs to be quantified. So it's very rare that you will find people publishing information that is false. Yes. Also, there <laughs> is um, a lot more trace for them to be able to be arrested if they're falsifying some information. So books are a good reference. But mm -hmm. I understand that yeah. reading... <laughs> It's not for everyone, right? No, you can't do very, It's like discipline. It's like, like discipline. It's, yeah. It's like discipline. So if that is not your cup of tea, you can also go on YouTube yeah. and figure out 
And I, I always also uh, suggest that people start with the basics, right? Yeah. Most of the time we went a Forex trade or we had that Bitcoin just hit its all-time high. Yes, and yes, we yes. now, manje, mm-hmm. that's, you know, Bitcoin. <laughs> it, it just hit its all-time high and you want it now. It's, because of lack of knowledge, you you're going to suffer because you want to get in when things are trending, mm-hmm. right? So um, let's invest in getting to know the basics. What are some of the basics that we need to know? Figuring out, you know, do I control, can I control what comes in and come out of my money? Yeah. Do I have enough to be able to save for emergency. That's just money sitting there, but of course with uh, uh, interest-bearing accounts and beating your inflation, of yeah, course, yeah. right? Do I have my cont- uh, a credit credit score um, uh, uh, all in, in the right place? Yeah. Is my credit score okay, right? That Those are some of the things in which you need to, to start with to understand before you can even tap into crazy things that are more difficult to understand. Because what I know with investing and, and the knowledge of finance is that one feeds into the other. As soon as you get budgeting right, it's going to be easy to save. As soon as you get saving right, it's going to be easy to be interested in, in investing and also understanding the concept of investing. As soon as also you get investing, you want to tap into other worlds such as NFTs, such as yeah. your Bitcoin and so yeah. forth, right? And it's much easier that way. So you can progressively start from the basics, you know, increasing your knowledge in, in that in that aspect. And yeah. you can do it using TikToks. I mean, it's it's, it's few minutes in TikTok, on TikTok, but you can understand a lot yeah. from there. Of course, the information yeah. there, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. can be, you cannot uh, affect check it, yes. you know, but you can try to watch as much as you can until you can figure out ways in which you can... Um, you... You, you can implement. You mentioned budgeting. I feel like I've, I I missed that because I kind of feel like that is the foundation, like yes. you mentioned. What are your strategies in budgeting and what is the importance of budgeting? Yes. So if you do not budget, um, what happens is you will constantly wonder where your money went. So budgeting is a tool that helps you to direct where your money should go. Right. And every single person is budgeting. I think people have this perception that budgeting is only for people who do not have money. But you as a business person, if you don't know what your income looks like revenue, actually, let me use the right term. Mm. If you don't know what your revenue looks like and your expenses for the business is, you won't know if your business is profitable or not. Right. So that's what we do on a personal space when it comes to budgeting. We're actually looking into like what is our income, what is our expenses and what is our disposable income, which then in business is profitable. Yeah. Right. So you have to know those things because for you to be able to achieve literally anything that requires money, you have to decide it there. So budgeting for me is a tool that where decisions are made, where decisions about your finances are made. Yes. Right. So if you want to I like giving an example of buying a house, if you want to buy a house and you want to save up for a deposit, you need to decide on the percentage in which you can save on a monthly basis from your budget. So this is what budgeting for me is, right? When it comes to strategies, there is multiple strategies of budgeting, and I'll talk about the ones that I, 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 I use later. Mm. Pay yourself first is also another budgeting strategy, meaning that you focus so much, you focus too much of your energy in making sure that your goal is achieved and everything else comes secondary, right? Oh, so yeah. let's say, for an example, again, buying a house, mm. and you have a target of getting 12,000 rand for deposit, right? That means when the money comes in, your priority becomes saving for that particular goal. That's paying yourself first. Yes. Secondly, there's 50 30 20 rule. 50 30 20 rule, its purpose is to be able to be directional to you, yeah. to give you some sort of control in regards to categories in which you spend your money. So it says that 50% at least should be saved in your needs and um, uh, 30% in your wants and uh, 20% in your discretion, like discretionary spend, also oh, savings and, um, and paying of debt. So 20% savings and paying of debt. Mm-hmm. Um, 30% discretion or wants, mm. and um, 50% then is your needs. Yeah. So how do you use the 50, 30, 20 rule? You use it as a direction. Let's say, for an example, you are not budgeting at all. Yeah. So you want to be able to understand where is most of my money going? Is it going towards my needs? Is it going towards my 
ones or discretionary spending? Is it going towards paying off debt or is it going towards your saving, right? Yeah. Most of the time you'll find that you don't have 50, 30, 20 when you are starting. Yeah. What you need to do is to move things around. And it's okay to have a target of 60, 20, 20. Oh. It's okay to have a target of, you know, 80, 60, 80. exactly. Yeah. If, okay. if it's, it meets what you're trying to do, mm. right? The one that I use is called budget to zero. Budget to zero means that you know where every cent that comes in, where it goes, right? It means that you understand how much bank charges you have. It means that you know when you're being charged something which you do not understand in your account, right? It means that you review your statement and you actually can trace that this is where my money has gone for the month, right? And you plan on... You plan on your next month spend based on your this month spend. There are things which on a month to month you're trying to change. Like I said, spending has a lot to do with our emotions and behavior and nothing to do with your will. Even when the willpower, I mean to David Uti, you know, exactly so it's the same when it comes to budgeting yeah. you realize that you have the willpower but if you don't put like action in place to be able to achieve the things in which you want it it will never go anywhere so in in closing mm. i feel that it's very very important to take your budgeting serious that's where literally anything like anything else will come yeah, then yeah. later what are the tools that you use I love I love that question. So to our point of automation, it's very much simpler when your things are automated, right? Yeah. For me, I know <laughs> this this was gonna be like <laughs> so bad. Yeah. I use pen and a paper. <laughs> that's good. I mean that's what I use also. <laughs> There are like some apps. They are. They, they are. They are. Yeah. I'm going to mention them. But I use pen and a paper. I still use pen and a paper today mm. because I, I'm, a, I'm a big, I'm big on journaling. Yeah. So I, I, I like writing things down. I like writing my ideas and so forth. So mm. you know, on a pen and a paper, at least on the side, I can still write some of the things that I feel like needs needs to yeah. happen. Right. Um, but there is like 22-7, I think it was created by Old Mutual, yeah. so that you link your accounts into that 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 uh, app, mm -hmm. and then it tracks spending for you, and it categorizes them, and so forth. But That's, is it accurate? Because when I log on mine, I hate myself. Uh, but if it's not aligned I with your spend... I just feel like spend, it's, no, it's too much. If it's not aligned with your spend... But, but it oh, could I'm be right. I'm exactly. Myself. That's where I was going. <laughs> Could be bad. I'll do yes. a review. I just feel like no. It's man. important to do a review and reallocate because trust me, the information comes from you. Mm. That in course you link accounts to it, right? Yes. So, but banks have started to do that the same the same view that you get from 227, you yeah. can find it on a standard bank app, but don't know about other banks, right? Yeah. So you go to add-ons. And then you can go to money management. There's a, a, a feature called money yeah. management on Standard Bank. It will tell you money in and money out, right? From the graphs, you can clearly see if you're spending more than what is coming in. If you unama overdraft, unama credit card, it will show that you're spending a lot more than what's coming in from the graphs. It has money in and money out for the month, right? So when you drill down money in, it will show you what money got deposited into your account, whether yeah. it's your salary, whether it's your, you know, and so forth and so forth. And it goes to money out, it will sell you in category. This is what went into transportation. You will see your tracker, your fuel, your car installment, and so forth. If you go into your house category, you'll be able to see rates and taxes and so forth, all of those things that are associated with house. So there are tools. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I like reviewing my statement as in like printing it out yes. um, and, and, and going liner by liner. But you are able to do this review on apps such as the one that Standard Bank has created. Wow. That's mm -hmm. so nice. You really need to be very intentional. I feel like this money thing is an intentional business. Definitely. You, you, you can't just you can't. control it without even you can't. knowing <laughs> the smallest thing. You mentioned that you know the smallest charges, mm. the bank charges. I see them. I don't question them. I just see them. <laughs> How important are those small charges? I call them money leaks, right? I call them money leaks because I feel that it's things which you spend on and you are not aware that they consolidated, they get consolidated into something bigger, right? Mm. So what I normally, when I decided to become a private banker back in the days, what happened is my bank, the bank called mm. and asked me, ma'am, do you know how much you spend on a monthly basis? Then yes. I didn't know. I said, no. They said, okay, you could be a private <laughs> banker and we can half the 
charges in which you're getting yeah. by not being a, a private bank. And I was very surprised. And I was spending 100, 800 rand on mm. bank charges. Trust me, 800 rand, I can do so much. I can take myself out. Yeah. You know, I can get my massage. I can, I'm can. i like, who? how much can you re- reduce it on? And I think they said they ch- they're going to charge 350. And that simply means that automatically I'm saving 550 on a month to month. Mm. That money is about six, seven thousand, eight thousand in a year. So it's a lot of money, yeah. right? That's how I moved into um, into private banking. But it's not only that. Small mm. charges, for an example, mm. I did an assessment on myself because I like doing these things. Yeah. <laughs> um, because when I do mentoring, I like to show practical examples. Yeah. I'm a Starbucks fan, right? Easy. So I go to Starbucks and I work there, yeah. right? And now I'll be doing my work. I will buy two, three cups. One cup with a croissant, right? Yeah. And that amounts to eight rand. So that means it's 160. Mm. So I checked on a monthly basis how much I spend. It was almost 2,000 and something. And would you want to spend 2,000 and something intentionally on coffee and croissant and looking cool at Starbucks? Possibly not, right? So yeah. it's, it's how you get to realize that these are serious money leaks that if you were intentional, but you can re- direct that spend towards something which mm. by intention when I'm sitting down and I'm so bad up, I can say, maybe let me pay for that uh, coaching session that I've been yes, meaning to do, yes. you know? Wow. Yep. Let's talk about investment. Yes. Because we, we mentioned saving. Investment now, this is where money grows. Yes, definitely. What are your principles when it comes to investing? Okay. My principles when it comes to investing, uh, like I said, understand the risk associated, mm. link your investment to your a particular goal, um, and um, oh, I'm not thinking of any right now. But mm. just to touch base on the two that I mentioned, right, like mm. understand your risk. I uh, I find that my mentees are excited about investing and then they get burned, right? Mm. However, investing makes so much money, guys, right? Yeah. It makes so much money. And that's why we have Warren Buffett, guys. Yeah, like, exactly. it makes so much money. So um, what I look into for me is that I categorize my investment as well. Oh. I call my investment a portfolio because... Of course, I don't want to, I'm sure you have had this, put yeah. your eggs in one basket, yes. right? Yes. So you don't want to be heavily invested in one thing. So I have your unit trust and I have property as well in it. I have shares in it as well, mm. right? So that if anything is to happen anywhere else, then I still I can still be able to survive. You don't want to invest in maybe um, one type of asset class that if that particular asset class crashes, then you are you are dummy. So do yeah. not put your eggs in one basket is also one. So diversify your portfolio. Look into investment, not only from one like uh, investment option only. Yeah. Figure out how can you maximize all these tools because they all do different things. For an example, I learned recently about hedge funds, right? Yeah. Which goes against what the economy is doing. So if the economy is doing well, the hedge funds... Uh, will not do so well, yeah. but when the economy is doing bad, they thrive. So yeah. I was learning more about the hedge funds, and I'm like, okay, how can I incorporate it into my portfolio yeah. so that whether the economy is doing well or not, yeah. then I'm able to, to to survive or I still have a portfolio that is solid enough. So I think that is one, but I also wanted to speak about compound interest, right? Yes. Uh, Albert Einstein was quoted saying, um, compound interest is the eighth wonder, eight, eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, ends it, and he who doesn't mm. pays for it, right? Yeah. So the corporate, the financial institution, especially bank, they make so much money from compound interest, charging it from us because we are charged on credit. The yeah. interest is charged on a daily basis based on the amount in which we are owing. Right, so they make so much money. If you're buying a house on credit and you're gonna pay it on a period of 20 years, you're probably gonna pay double the price, right? Yeah. That means they made 100% profit from you. So you can do the same when it comes to investing and gain from profit uh, uh, compound interest on your side because yeah. the earlier you start, the more compound interest plays in your favor because interest on the money, on the principal amount in which you have saved yeah. or you have invested, then gets charged on a daily basis or compounded monthly or compounded annually yes. to be able for you to make more money. I make this example. I just don't have my phone. There is this scenario that I normally give to people to say, you know, if one person starts investing from, 24 to 30, and this is for retirement, from 24 to 30, and they stop, and they're contributing 250, right? And then there's another person who starts um, investing from 
age of 35 to age of 60, right? Mm. The first one would have contributed 18,000 in total. The second one, 90,000 in total, right? If you check the the the, the results, the return mm. when they retire those people, you find that the one who invested more and who invested longer actually makes less money than the one who invested the small amount but who invested earlier, and who invested like small amount, shorter period but earlier. So compound interest really needs time so that your money can spend enough time compounding yes. because he contributed a lot, but that lot didn't get enough time to compound. Mm. So therefore he makes less. So that's very important. And I find that on a concept wow. of retirement, maybe before I go, cause it's part of in investment. Yeah. I feel that a lot of people actually do not understand or do not care enough. Young people do not care enough about retirement. It's so sad that it said only 6% of people are able to retire comfortably. I think us young people like to talk about retire, retiring ill. I want to retire in my 40s. I want to retire. <laughs> That's yeah, me. You I'm know. one of them. Yes, but we need a retirement plan. It's not a bad goal, yeah. but we need a retirement plan. You need to figure out if I want to retire at 40, how much do I need to have to make sure that when I'm withdrawing from this m money going forward, it will not be less it will still be growing, and I will still be able to live the same lifestyle that I'm living when my income is coming, right? Mm -hmm. And you need to understand that. You need to plan that. You need to figure out which asset are you going to need. Would uh, ETFs help you? Will property help you? Will mm -hmm. You know, you need to figure out that aspect of retirement plan so that yeah. you can get your retirement early. Otherwise, it's just a dream that yeah. we all have. So you, you mentioned ETFs, you mentioned mm -hmm. properties. According yes. to you, and obviously giving people advice, who wants to consider retiring early? Yes. What assets should, be, should, should they be looking at? Personal experience is yes. not about financial advice. Yes. You just, you, based on your experience and your knowledge. So for someone who's looking to retire early, you will need all assets to play for you because some will give you safety, Mm -hmm. Some will give you aggressive growth, yes. and you need both, yes. right? Yeah. So when it comes to pro property, is my favorite. Yes. <laughs> for for obvious reasons, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you get <laughs> rental income. Mm -hmm. You also get capital growth from it. Yes. It's the same with shares. Shares you get dividends. Yes. You also get capital growth, right? Yes. However, when it comes to shares, you cannot predict either one of them. You cannot predict yes. how much dividends you're going to get. Yes. You cannot predict capital gains, right? Yes. On property, in as much as I cannot predict my capital gain, like how my property is going to appreciate, mm -hmm. I can get a valid answer on my rental. I can actually project my rental and know how much I'm going to have in the next four years, how much am I going to... So I have like some certainty. Yes. It's one of the highest paying or highest return asset that you can predict in terms of your, your income. Others depends on economy and tomorrow it can come, we yes. can wake up in a doom mm -hmm. that influence the market and numbers just fluctuate and then things go beyond your plan. Yes. So I love property because I can plan with it. Mm -hmm. I can predict what can come out of it. And of course, market still gets influenced even in property, yes. but it's more, it's a lot more, it's less fluctuating than other asset classes. So for someone who's looking into retirement and just looking at myself in GA, because I cannot prescribe without knowing your circumstances. Yeah. Property is probably the one way in which I'll pr probably be able to retire early um, through. But how easy is to get into property investment? <laughs> I'm talking about the actual owning yes. of the property, yes. not assets. Mm -hmm. I mean, not the, the stocks. Yes, good question. So, huh, I don't know how easy or how hard. Because how it hard was, was it for you? Good question. <laughs> that one is good. <laughs> so for me, it was easy. <laughs> and um, sorry to say, it was. I, I managed my dad's uh, property portfolio when I was a graduate. So I graduated and I moved into one of my dad's um, uh, property um, uh, two-bedroom in Pretoria. I was sharing at that time. Yeah. Um, and the only deal we had with my dad was that, hey, manage this thing for me so that you don't have to pay rent. I was like, ooh, you bet I'm going to do it. Yes. It was really, really challenging because um, this young kid, very, very small and petite in size at that time, of course, now I'm thicker. Yeah. <laughs> the so, money is growing. <laughs> so I, I used to go and collect rent, and I used to evict people, and I used to do all of those things. That understanding, and at some point, I actually helped my dad to sell uh, one of his properties. 
So that understanding actually allowed me to have a better view of what market I was dealing with before I joined because yes. I got to decide on what property investment type do I want to get myself into because the things that my dad did then is not what I'm doing. Yes. So, but the reason why I'm not doing that is because there's lessons that I learned yes. from what works from what he was doing yes. versus what I'm currently doing. So for me, the decision was... Uh, Easy is not a good word, but yeah. it was informed. Yes. Yeah. It was a lesson. Yes. 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 Wow. Now you, you, um, I heard you have like some properties, <laughs> student accommodations, <laughs> you know, I mean, you're doing well and th th congrats because Thank you. I mean, uh, you're still young, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we need to cherish people <laughs> like you because I mean, you're the one that's going to lead the next generation. Um, what what would you say was your strategy in, mm -hmm. into getting to to this level? Okay, in terms of property. Yes. Okay. How did you get there? Was it saving? What was it? Yeah. Investment. Yeah, it's, what, what it's, was it's a very valid question because really one thing for sure is that property will need money from you, yes. right? Um, and the ones that normally don't need money from you, won't make money for, for you. <laughs> That's that part. So if you right? go to the bank, but okay, yes. that does include also the bank. Uh, I am including the bank. Okay. Right? So if you go to the bank and you're looking for a two-bedroom apartment, it's a sectional title um, um, a property, it's found in an estate, mm. um, probably maybe, let me give give an example with numbers, probably it's a million rand or, or 900,000, right? Yeah. It's a two-bedroom, two-bath, cute apartment, um, you buy it and you want to rent it out for the purpose of investment, yes. right? So the rent in which you're pro possibly going to get from that investment, mm. most of the time will not exceed the amount of money that's required for you to run the business, right? For an example, if it's that one million rand and if it's a two-bedroom apartment, the best you can charge maybe let's say is... 9k 4.5 each maybe if it's two people yeah right and you find that the rent is probably 9000 rand right yeah. so but there's rates and taxes there's levies there's municipalities <laughs> there's you know all of that additional cost so therefore it, you may need to top up a bit in the beginning so you, you can losing. get you know gaining yes there's no positive cash flow you're starting on a ne negative cash flow so it, there is possibility that um People can project for you mm -hmm. that in the next coming three years, maybe you can break even and get the same money <laughs> that, yeah. you know, is coming in would go out. That means that the thing which you're relying the most on when it comes to that particular business is actually growth of the property itself. Yeah. Why do people still do this? Because people are still doing this. Sometimes people have a goal of sending their kids to school through property. So really for them, it's not necessarily about making positive cash flow right away. They yeah. are okay contributing a little bit, maybe 2,000 rand more yeah. for maybe the next, for the first three years. But beyond that, then they will have just as much as what they are paying. Yes. At the time in which their child gets to go to to uh, university, they can refinance the, the, the property and use the money to send the kids to school. Yeah. Or they can sell it and use um, money to send the child to school. Yeah. But as a young person th that I am, I yeah. still feel like I'm young. You are. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel like it's important for me to have a positive cash flow business. Like my business should, st should be making mm. money from the get-go, right? So in terms of strategy, I used both my own cash plus the bank. I did get a loan when I was doing my student accommodation. I did get a loan yeah. and I did have a huge chunk <laughs> of cash. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Did, was it, was it, well, did you withdraw it? It was just in the bank. In no, the I didn't withdraw. I didn't get to see it. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to withdraw. So yeah. when I was growing up, my dad used to have taverns, so I have seen enough cash. Nah. Uh, physical cash. Why not? How do you grow up in a <laughs> so, nice place? Your no, I'm, I'm a mighty. village girl. No, I am no, a village girl. But, but but it's like money was there. That's why no, I saw it. I mean, I saw coins. I, it's it's you know like people <laughs> coins, got tavern. No, no, people got tavern. But I'm a fifty oh, rand. Like it never okay. gets to two hundred. 
So yeah. Yes. Yeah, so um, getting back into the strategy. So I did use both fi financing and I used a huge chunk to renovate. Mm. So my goal was to have as many rooms as possible because I wanted positive cash flow. So I strategized, figure, trying to figure out how much would I need for me to get the rooms in which I want. And I estimated a value. And I'm going to talk about the challenges. Even if you don't ask me, I'm going to talk about yeah. it. So I estimated the value that would be needed for me to get the output that I needed. I was building a 15-bedroom uh, student accommodation. 15? Yeah. So I bought, yeah. right, a smaller, a smaller uh, house yeah. and renovated it into 15 bedrooms. Yeah. How, how, how small was the room? <laughs> It was just enough <laughs> for students. I said I, I had a lot of cash, okay? Yeah. That should be enough. So I think the biggest challenge that I would say was that in as much as I had saved a lot, mm. it was still not enough yeah. for what I had budgeted for because um, building is expensive, guys. I think buying takes a lot of mentally mental stress, dis stress from yeah. you, to be honest. If you're buying residential, if you're looking for a residential property, I would say just buy, you know, especially if you're like me, you don't like, you know, yeah. dealing with things happening. Uh, but, you know, when you have a lot of money, you get project managers yes. and yes. so forth. Yeah. So that's easier. But if you're going to manage it yourself, just buy if it's a residential. But if it's an investment, you may need to plan and also buffer, mm. buffer of the difference between what you have planned and what could actually happen. Yeah. So that's that's the biggest challenge in the planning side that I faced, but also services provider, guys. You need reliable services, <laughs> services provider. Mm. People there on the internet, they can do anything. Huh? They can sell you literally anything. Yeah. They have a portfolio on social media. It's so perfect. With, it's perfect. <laughs> and then a person does something to you and you see cracks and you're going to see them later. That's the painful part. Because the renovation is such a, it's such a, it's different from building from scratch. Yes. So you are attaching one building to the other. You need, I don't know what they call it, but a very proper way to make sure that those things don't crack. Yeah. So really go and view a place where someone who is offering you that type of service is saying that this is where I've renovated. Go ask him mm. if you can go and, and, and view their place so that you can get to see that how long has it been built? How long has, has it retained the same stature of outlook and so forth and the yeah. cracks and everything because another thing that you would find is that um your your original structure can even be affected by the yes. messiness that has been done already you find that you're even paying more to redo the work so it's a very costly mistake that you can make so yes. just make sure that you know when it comes to services provide not only like the build like uh, literally everyone the plumber the electrician mm. make sure there's referrals there's references there's you know any yeah. checks that you can do beforehand is exactly what you want wow i mean you 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 are doing everything that has to do with money <laughs> And I mean, I'm sure there are other businesses that I might not know yes. of, you know, <laughs> but um, by just looking at the way you understand money, if all oh, these smallest things, I, I wouldn't say you have money problems. Would you say you have money problems? I, oof. I no, I don't have money problems. And uh, I want to phrase it this way because yeah. I, I wanted to admit, but I thought my God won't <laughs> like me for this, <laughs> you know? Um, no, I mean... You can only have a problem on something you don't understand. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Because so, when you have a plan together on what you want to get, because I wanted to say, well, I would like to have more money. That is a problem, right? Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I know <laughs> what you I need to, to do, do to get more. So it's not so a problem. So it's not a problem. Yes, exactly. It's not a exactly. Problem. So, yes, I, I don't think that I have a money problem. And also, I still have gaps in the things in which I would like to do, mm. businesses I'm interested in, information I would like to learn. But that's not a money problem when I know how to find it. I have like two categories of questions that are left, but Ooh. I just want to understand. I've seen you working with Okta, and Okta today, they are our sponsor. Yay. Shout out to Okta. <laughs> you know, for the Forex traders who are watching here, you need to understand money. Yes. Because if you win or if you get to, you know, be chosen by the market in a favorable way, you need to understand what to do with that yes, money. That's why we have Zwanda here who's going to tell us about that. You, you worked with them. I did. Tell me about the platform, what you love more about the platform. I think the, the 
biggest thing that I like about uh, Okta, mm. which also I do not see with other institutions, yeah. is that they had this tab on their website, yeah. which is name education. Mm -hmm. And within that tab, it's not only education about trading, yes. it's education about money management as well. And I feel like when people are looking into making more money, yeah. they also need to know what they are going to do with the money in which they will get. Yes. Also, I feel that, you know, there's um, goal setting. I think I saw another article about goal setting. Yeah. You really need to know to align everything that you're doing because the, doing it for the sake of just doing it, you, you will not, you will see mom momentarily wins yeah. and you will not see long lasting yes. results. So with your wins, yeah. with, with what you're gaining from Okta, you should be able to know what are you going to do with it? How can you improve yeah, your, your knowledge? Your, exactly. So you need to educate yourself as well um, on how to manage money. So that I love so much. Also, it's very rare to have a financial institution <laughs> that educates. That teaches <laughs> yes. you. Because, I mean, I mean, wow. I mean, that's, yes. that's brilliant, man. Let, let's talk about the, the, the economical awareness. We're living mm -hmm. in South Africa, obviously, you know. As much as people want to save, as much yes. as people want to invest... Yeah, they are tied up because yeah, of the economic so things are expensive. <laughs> yes. You know, <laughs> there was there was someone that told me, you know, I buy groceries four times in a month. Sure. Not because I don't know if there's eating problem. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is just a shortage of things are expensive. Yes. I don't know if yes. things are no longer sustainable. I mean, if you wanna eat healthy now. It's more You're not going to buy for a month and say yes. you want to eat healthy. The greens are going to uh, rot exactly. and stuff like that. How, how do you maneuver around these economical uh, challenges? Challenges, yes. I mean, to spend also. How, how strict are you with money and also trying to, to be alive? Yeah, that it, it's a reality for a lot of people. It is a reality for a lot of people. And I, I wouldn't even downplay it. It's just tough. Yeah. Unemployment rate is high. Everything is escalating. Fuel prices is high. Food prices is... is Guys, we're complaining about eggs and fish oil and everything. It's a reality. It is. It is a reality. So the, the management part, I feel like sometimes you have to acknowledge that you have an income problem. Right? Yeah. Because if your money cannot accommodate what you want, even if it's the bare minimum, it means you have an income problem. Yes. And we start with that acknowledgement so that we can figure out what do we need to do from where we are to where we aspire to be or where yeah. we desire to be, yeah. right? And it's not easy, I know, but I would say that I don't think that one can survive with one stream of income at, in this type of economy. So really, you need to explore what else can you do to compensate for your main primary income so that you can get your secondary, like you need to explore, like what do I need to do in addition so that I can live better? For an example, what you mentioned, mm. healthy lifestyle is expensive. Yeah. It's expensive a lot more than eating junk. I was surprised, yes. <laughs> right? So really you need to look into, okay, if I want to compensate for my healthy living because it's also important in yeah. my life, I need to get an additional income. For an example, when I started, I used to sell Avon. And the reason why I used to sell Avon, I don't know why people undermine selling. I love selling, guys. Uh, selling <laughs> is the first step to make money. I love selling. I mean, <laughs> you can't make money if you don't know how to sell I, yourself, sell a product, or sell, sell anything. literally anything, you know? Yeah. So, yes, so I used to um, sell Avon. Mm. I used to like it. I used to sell Avon. <laughs> and the reason why I used to do it is because when I started working, I decided that I want to explore restaurants, right? Mm. It is a lifestyle which I knew that is expensive because restaurants, clearly, they want to make money, so they make everything expensive. So I was like, you know what? For me to not stress my salary, yeah. let me sell something which will give me an ability to live this adventurous experience that I want to have. Yes, so yes. I used to find my restaurant exploring through my Avon income. Mm. And I feel that a lot of us, even from my like I think from university, teach yourself to sell. Teach yourself to sell something. Find something which is easier for you to speak about yeah. and then begin to sell it, right? For me, it was Avon then. I, like, I mean, I, I love selling. I, I mean, even my I mean, current job has a component of sales right now and I love it. So really, okay. if you have an income problem, find a way to compensate for your current income so that you can relie relieve the pressure that yeah. your current income has. You mentioned that 
having one stream of income is not enough. How many is enough according to the good to good view? question? Good question because it's not necessarily about streams of income. It's yeah. just it, it, the value. Yes. If one stream of income is giving you two million per week, uh, you, it's according fun. to me, if it's mine, yeah. I would be okay with it, yeah. right? So it's not necessarily about how many. It's more of, you know, like how much, mm. <laughs> right? How much do they yes. bring in? But more than anything, if you can, focus also on generating money without selling your time, yes. right? You want to be able to generate money independent of time. So like our content, right? Yes. So even when you're not there on YouTube, people, money. it's still making money. Yes, maybe there's a component of time which has to do with what we're doing now, yeah. but it can still make money for the next coming 10, 20 months to, yes. to come. So you yes. also need to figure out how can I um, combine active income plus passive income so that at least I can minimize the amount of attention and work that I need to do in order to generate this income so because really we have 24 hours and there's only so much you can do within 24 hours and sometimes when your attention is so divided you will not be able to thrive in any of those yes. so you also need to check that as you decide on how much wow damn <laughs> yes. you know I'm, I'm looking at my questions and uh, please guys you forgive me you have to add extra five minutes for me <laughs> master please <laughs> extra five minutes make it 10 make it maybe one hour 40 minutes i really appreciate that because there's something that's uh, that i really really want to know yeah uh, and this this is very personal to me because mm -hmm. i've seen you you have shared um how you invest in easy equities you mm -hmm. know and you have spoken more about your biggest portfolio is on under resources yes you know? <laughs> why 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 resources and and I mean, I'm, I, want, I haven't looked at it like that. Yes. Why resources? Ugh, it's, it's biased. It's biased investing, and I think we need to be cautious of, of it. <laughs> the yeah. reason I said this was because I wanted people to be aware that you can be a biased investor. I studied mining engineering. So yeah. the mine, I understand them. They're on my face literally every day. I know... Um, I know um, Anglo is, is retrenching 3,700 people. I know Seriti 1.2. I know um, Glencote 3,000 as well. You know, it's information that is on my face every day. Yeah. So the things that are happening within that industry, most of the time, I would easily find them because they are happening within my day-to-day -day experience. Yes. So it's much easier to kind of gauge where the industry is. Like, yes. now I know the industry is, is going through the downturn. And knowing that mining is a cyclic, cyclical business, I'm still, in a way, uh, okay with that because I know we'll that it back. will recover, yeah. right? So that's the reason why I have a lot of res resource. It's it's biasness, right? Yeah. And we spoke earlier, yeah. you're into tech, yeah. so possibly <laughs> I can I can say without even seeing your portfolio <laughs> that your portfolio is probably full of tech. It's yeah. called bias investing. Yeah. Why is that dangerous? Because it is dangerous. When... The, in, the cycle of mining is going through doubt. And guess what my portfolio looks like right now? Probably red. Yes. Probably going through the most, right? Yeah. And that's not right because you should... That do not put your eggs in one basket means that you should not focus on either one industry, one asset class yes. because when something happens to that, you get to... Your whole portfolio suffers, right? I am trying to balance it, but I'm not going to sell what I already have yeah. because, you know, I've, I've owned it for a very long time and I have a very uh, long-term outlook. It's emotional, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's sentiment. I no? know, I know. So I still feel like there is hope when it comes to mining in the South yeah. African... Um, and what are other portfolios that you're holding? I mean... I have a unit... I have unit trust as well. Is it? I have unit trust as well, and I've had it for a very long time. I normally say that if you have a calculator, you can take it out. Yeah. So I started contributing 2,000 rand per month since 2017 on my unit trust, right, what? to date. So you can so, do the numbers. So is that, your, is that one of the amounts <laughs> yes, you have? Yes, that is, that is my unit somewhere. trust. That is my what, what is a unit trust? So unit trust is an investment. It's like ETF, right? It's a group of... It's a group of, actually, let me start here. Mm. So financial institution mm. um, sells unit trust. Yeah. There is a fund manager within that financial institution who then decide what asset 
will they combine to create u- the unit trust in which you're buying? Yeah. So they can choose commodity, they can choose government retail bonds, they can choose fixed uh, market money markets, they can choose uh, commodity or property mm. or shares, right? Yeah. So they decide how to balance that um, portfolio, meaning that it's like a, a stock fell that went to Model C school. Yeah. Because we all put in that money within that fund and then the person who's called the fund manager then decide which assets they're gonna put their money in and it's regulated guys they're not doing it based on their own mind alone there's regulations that guides what they can do or cannot do right so that's what unit trust looks like the one that i the one that i'm talking about that i started very long time is Mm. called a balance fund right Mm. so a balance fund means that you have a 20 percent equal um equal uh, distribution of asset it has commodity as money market it has property it has um, tech yes so on stock yes yeah. this probably because it has stock yeah. and and so f- i think and gold I, yeah. I think right so it's balanced fund so n- most of the time what you will find with unit trust is that the name of a unit trust mimic what they invest in for an example, you have a unit trust which is called equity fund. Equity mm. fund meaning that they invest in shares. You will have another one which is called income uh, fund. Mm. That means that they focus on income-bearing stocks or inco- anything that generates income, they invest in that. Yes. So with the name, you can kind of have an idea on what to in- what the fund manager is focusing on, what their goal looks like, mm. right? There is one reason why I like... Um, uh, unit trust is that they when you want to invest in unit trust there's something which is called fact sheet right yeah. a fact sheet is a place where you can find literally all the information that you as an investor may be interested in for you to be able to invest in that particular unit trust yeah. you'll be able to see when it was started how it has been behaving for the last five months three months ten ten years yes. you know and so forth so wow. you're able to gauge mm. in a way what to anticipate, although the past performance doesn't guarantee future performance, but you're able to see what that particular fund manager is able to do mm. on that fund. So it can give you confidence if what you are planning on achieving your goal could be attained through this unit trust. So where do you access this unit trust? Mm, there are several companies that provide unit trust. Mm. You can find it at Coronation. I'm not their friends. You know, I'm just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, I just mentioned. You know, <laughs> Coronation, the of the Alan Gray, Investec. Is, is Equity has Easy it. Equities now has them. I think yeah. it started in 2021. Is it? For, yeah, so where you find tax-free savings account, you can find unit trust as well. Oh. Um, you can find ETFs as well. Unit trust are also there. So wow. you can find them there. Um, one thing that a person can be careful of when they're investing in unit trust, because we can't only tell you the good things, um, unit trust most of the time has higher management cost, right? Why is that bad for investor? It's bad because um, the management cost is taken from your growth. So if you made, let's say, for an example, 10% growth, yeah. and then they are charging 3% management cost, that means you made 7 yeah. Right? Is that good enough? Maybe not as good as ten. So really, be careful on you know deciding which one you take. But why do you love them if they're such? No, there are ones which charges less. I'm saying you need to be careful because they can charge up to three oh, percent. Okay. Right? So yes. So yours is what range? So anything that has one one point five or less mm. for me that's comfortable. Oh. Yeah. Spirituality, it has yes. a lot to do with money. What are your spiritual principles when you look at money itself? Sure. I, I think um, I want to start with boundaries, right? Yeah. Money will make you cross so many boundaries, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And um, I think if you don't have um, a backing, I don't know what to call it, a, a stand. Uh, ground yes a ground to stand on when it comes to what you can do for money and with the money then you know it you can access many worlds uh, many than what we 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 understand um the reason why people uh feel that they need to pay or with a brown envelope to access certain opportunities is because they themselves don't think that they can naturally can Mm. access those things right Mm. Uh, for you to win a tender maybe you need to you know all of those things and i think it's very important to have that grounding um you know so that you you don't cross things so there are people who are unofficially prostitutes unfortunately you know dating a man simply because he has money that's really and and your guys like this is like a poverty 
mentality that we learn even without knowing yeah. you are just drawn by anything money related yeah. so i feel that money is very spiritual because it it, it drives the like the core of who we are it's yeah. there man it can determine how far you can go <laughs> and how how you can lose your soul yes yes Yes, and it can easily temper it than anything else. That's what I'm trying to say. That it's the one thing which can temper with who you are more than anything else. People are changing. Lack of it and too much of it. Oh, is it? Yes, so both. both. So then how do you balance using spirituality then? Yes, yeah, so for me, mm. I, I feel that, and, and I'm, I'm blessed to have like spir spiritual place where I serve, right? Yeah. I feel that having an understanding of who you are from a spiritual standpoint helps you to not define yourself based on what you have. It's very tough, mm. right? Because I feel like in the generation in which we live in, it's more of, let me give you this example. Yeah. I go into an event, People don't ask me how I'm doing and so forth. They let me be sitting in my corner. I don't even care, yeah. right? And then I stand up and I speak, yeah. right? And then people have found out some of the things that I say. Then they can associate me with certain numbers yes. in their heads. Yeah. Now they're interested in... Being your friend. Exactly, being in my friend. That thing... <laughs> That thing on its own shows you that there is somehow in a society a, a definition that... You get amplified if you have certain numbers. You are, get amplified yes. when you have... For me, I had to understand that money is an enabler. It's a tool that I can use to get to where I'm going. It's not who I am, right? Tomorrow, if I wake up and I lost it all, trust me, I will I'll still be the same person that I am today because there's a definition of who I am that has nothing to do with the money that I've accumulated, the knowledge that I have in finances. And that is what I believe would help you figure out that balance to not... And shout out to my boyfriend. <laughs> like, he has taught me so much in regards to not, like, not gauging who people are based yeah. on what they are wearing. Because yeah. really, I don't think that we do it intentionally. It's the way we are conditioned, yes, right? Yes. You really have to be very intentional about how you want to engage with people in who they are yes, without yes, what they look yes. like or what they present. And I'm, I've been intentionally educating myself and 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 you know uh put, putting breaks where i feel like i'm doing mm. things based on what i see or who i think people are people are human beings and mm. they are people of god and really we really need to respect one another in that aspect without figuring out which car yeah. i drive it's... or which estate i stay in you know so yeah let's let's figure out who we are outside of what we have accumulated so that we can find that sweet balance to respect everyone and also to be able to be okay when we lose and when we win because losing is painful yeah. but at least you still need to be who you are wow guys hey not today i've learned <laughs> this one is going to help me i'm going to go back and sit down and listen to it because trust me Money is everyone's problem. It is. So it is. information like this, platforms like this, talking about it like this, and people like you, you're helping us and you're helping the society. And that is the reason why we have this show. Yay. You know, this show is all about educating. <laughs> it has nothing to do with me. <laughs> you, know? you understand? Yes. So your last words, but before you say your last word, I just want to emphasize the fact that Buffet to this podcast, like I said, is sponsored by Okta. Yay, yay. Too. If you want to start a journey of trading, you know, I think Okta is the right platform. Like she already mentioned that there's some educational content there. You can go and learn on how you can start. Download the app. Link is on my bio. Use my code so that you can get the bonus. Too. No chill. Zanda. Kambe Navatu. Kela Kambe Navatu. I never thought that. Uba financially free i feel like they, mm. they have this thing that is holding them about finance and they really want to get out of that you know just give them a word of advice and a word of call to action yes so uh, one topic that we didn't cover would be debt management right yes which is also an important financial hindrance to a lot of african people yeah right True. um I would say if you have this kind of issue, just start by admitting that you have it. It will not help you to 
avoid debits, right? I have a mentee. She has allowed me to speak about this. Yeah. Um, she used to transfer her money from uh, the main account to another account so that when the debit comes in, there's, they nothing. F- there's nothing. So she said she would set an alarm because her income would come, mm. would come um, in very early. So she yeah. would set up an alarm to move that money so that when the debitors come, they find... Yes you are not doing yourself any favor. Mm. It's better to face it head on and deal with it so that you can start looking into the things we're talking about, such as saving and investing. Because avoiding it only means that it can come back later to bite you when you are ready to assess things like your car through a car loan or home through a home loan you won't be able to qualify and that would be very very sad because at that time you would be needing Mm -hmm. it so let's look into that the best ways to head it is to look at it head on list all the credits you have and figure out which one to pay first and uh, and you know replicates yeah. and so forth and so forth act upon them don't <laughs> yes. ignore them yeah. don't ignore them and i'm happy to say that with my mentee we have listed all the credits that she had and what we were able to achieve in a very short space of time was for her to pay all the machinists guys please let's not hear that your id is sitting somewhere where it's not <laughs> supposed to be please it's not nice yeah. um so yeah so i would say that if we are if i am to leave you with anything make sure that you do not only and this is my latest post on Mm. any social media platform make sure that you do not only focus on things that people can see right and i'm saying not only because it's there's nothing wrong with buying a nice car but let's not only invest in things that people can see i think that we are so invested in cars we are so invested in chains we were shirts we were clothes we were shoes we were jewelries we were and the vacations we go to that's not the only thing that will give you peace of mind uh that's not the only thing that will give you stability of your family and security for your family let's look into things like your life cover uh, saving for your children if you already have children because education is expensive and it's much needed information for your kid to thrive. Yeah. Even when they're not going to use it for the purpose of, you know, if they studied engineering, but it will help them to dissect information. It will help them to also be able to pursue other opportunities because they would have critical thinking in their mind. Yeah. Or whichever kind of education that you feel like is right for your children, but mm-hmm. invest in that. Let's invest in retirement planning. Let's invest in our own portfolio so that we can trust freely through the dividends that we get paid. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah, that's what I would uh, well, how, say. How can people reach out to you? Do you mentor people? Yes, do I do. I started this <laughs> year, actually. Just, like, <laughs> just, just, just quickly just say how they can reach to you. So you, know? um, you can reach out to me through my social media platforms. Uh, on Facebook, it's Zwanda Nana Rasiwera. And on Instagram, it's Zwanda underscore Nana. On Twitter, it's also Zwanda underscore you Nana. Don't know, you no longer use Twitter. I, I do not use Twitter much. I use it. <laughs> I just don't tweet. No. <laughs> I am on spaces where people are talking about agriculture. I'm listening. Okay. Um, so. Wow. Okay. Yes. That, yes. That is the topic for the next <laughs> epi- episode. Yes. <laughs> So yeah. I am on TikTok. It's Zwanda at Zwanda Zero. That's me. And I have a YouTube channel where I speak about some of the things that we discussed today. Yeah. And it's Zwanda Nana. Like he said, I have a mentorship program mm. which started in February. It's a February March mentorship program. So it's very it's very personal. If you do you're not ready to uh, look into <laughs> to personalize your things. Yeah. Please don't come. It yeah. won't it won't be as effective. I want to see how much you earn. I want to see how much you're spending on. I want to see your banking statement because I want us to be practical. Yeah. And I don't want you to attend for the sake of attending. Yeah. I want you to get something out of it. And we have groups where we share some practical information you can look into. So that is the mentorship that I have. So if you're looking into something like that, you can also reach out to me. Yeah. Okay, cool. I I think I'll leave the links on the description yes, so that they can just click <laughs> yes. and get to you. But yes. guys, for today, no chill vodcast buffet. We know that you know that every Sunday, every week actually, we bring you guys brilliance, brilliance, wisdom. Yes. If you want to learn and improve your life, this is the channel that you should subscribe to. Yeah. Trust me. You're not going to laugh too much. You're not going to hear us talking about people. We're going to be talking about your problems, your money problems. <laughs> so let's meet next week. Thank you to Okta for making this possible. 
Thank you, Zwanda, for coming. I really appreciate you. Thank you for the Team 360 Studio. Yay, Shout out yay. to you guys for making this thing <laughs> happening. Thank you, guys. Don't forget, if you want to trade, the link is on my description. Do the most and start learning. We need streams of income. You cannot yes. survive with one. <laughs> one. Let's meet next week, Wafetu. I'm out.